Welcome back, my friends, to the Life in the Universe pandemic series. As usual, I hope you're all taking care of yourself as the pandemic continues to uh, spread around the world. Uh, that's not going to stop us from having some interesting discussions. And today I want to talk about something that's not so much scientific. It's actually more of a political philosophical question. But I think you'll find it interesting because it does relate to the question of life in the universe, except um, it's more about human life in the universe and what it will be like to live in space. And the question I'm going to address today is, will space be full of tyrannies? Now, that again may sound like a little bit of an esoteric, strange question, but if you think about it, many uh, movies out there depict space as a place of freedom where we might escape problems on the earth, uh, whether that's uh, pandemics, for example, or any other problems on the earth. Space is a place where you can get away from your problems on earth. It could be something as simple as, as your family or, or bigger problems like a pandemic. But often you'll see space as depicted, uh, depicted as a place where you can uh, go out into this uh, blank canvas and establish uh, new societies, new experiments in living, as, as political philosopher John Stuart Mill once described it for the earth. And I want to uh, ask the question, are these really places of freedom or could space in fact be a place that is full of tyrannical regimes so in order to answer this question um, which i think is a very interesting one and i should say it's something that, uh, that i and my colleagues have been thinking about for a long time um, i'm not going to just plug a book for the sake of it but this is a an academic book just to give you an example of the sorts of things that we think about uh, what is the meaning of liberty beyond the earth and can we be free in extraterrestrial environments. It's a fascinating question. I should say this book is expensive. So if you want to read this, you can email me and I'll send you the PDF. You definitely don't want to be buying it. Um, it's a fascinating question because the ancient Greeks thought about it. Uh, Pericles in his, his famous funeral oration in which he set out uh, the great ethos of ancient Greek liberty and uh, ideas of freedom have, have followed us through the centuries. Uh, Thomas Hobbes, Rousseau, Locke, the list goes on of a vast number of political philosophers who have considered the questions of individual freedom. And one might say, of course, that it has fashioned some of the great conflicts of human history, particularly in the 20th century. Uh, some of the great conflicts of that time were rooted in, in uh, disagreements about the extent of individual and state uh, freedom to operate. And these questions will follow us out into space, whether you like it or not. Some people like to think that space will be a new environment. We can let go of all our previous problems and uh, start anew. But that is uh, at some levels not going to happen. When we move into space, the same old human problems will follow us out there. How free can we be? How free can an individual be? How much control should authorities have? So if you think about space for a moment, to answer this question of how much freedom will we have? Just think about the conditions of space. Imagine yourself on the moon for a moment. Um, where do you get your water? Well, your water will come from uh, craters on the moon or it will be shipped from the earth. But it will be quite difficult to get that water without relying on an extensive uh, production process. The same with, water, with food. If you want to grow food on the moon, you've got to build a pressurized greenhouse. You've got to protect that food from radiation. You've got to grow it in the rather um, organic poor regolith, the, the crushed up rock that makes the lunar surface, and then you can grow your crops. So it's not going to be easy to get water and food on the moon. You are going to be dependent on other people who therefore have some sort of control over your life. Now you could say the same is true on the earth, and that certainly is the case. Um, when you want water, you open your tap, but in fact that water comes from a sewage works uh, that has processed that water, and lots of people have uh, been involved in making your clean water. Your food from the supermarket comes from fields or factories and lots of people operate those factories. You don't necessarily have to feel particularly tyrannized or like you're living in a dictatorship just because there are a lot of people involved in providing your water and food. But there is one big difference between the earth and these extraterrestrial environments. And that is that in all of these extraterrestrial environments, whether you're on the moon or Mars, the atmosphere or the complete lack of atmosphere, as in the case of the moon, is instantaneously lethal. In other words, the oxygen that you breathe will come from a manufacturing process and you will be dependent upon other people for something that you require on a second to second time scale. And this has enormous 
uh, psychological implications. Because, of course, on the earth, if the government tries to take away your water or your food, you run off into a forest with your friends and you plan a revolution and you overthrow your government and you can put in place um, uh, slightly more uh, acceptable uh, political arrangements, or at least that's the idea. But certainly the government finds it very difficult to threaten you on a second to second time scale. Whereas in the extraterrestrial environment, uh, your oxygen will be controlled uh, or could be controlled by an authority who will therefore have power over you on a second to second time scale. And this has a number of uh, important implications for the political and economic environment. For example, if you were to go to your extraterrestrial authority and say, I think you're very dictatorial, I don't like you, you need to give us more freedom, we want more freedom of movement, we want more freedom of expression, uh, we are getting fed up with this tyranny, they can just turn around to you and say, that's no problem, let me open the airlock for you and you can walk out onto the lunar surface and escape our horrible regime. We completely agree with you. And of course, you will walk into your airlock and be instantly asphyxiated. So freedom can become very cynical in these environments, but there's worse because it's not just the fact that the authorities can physically control something on which you are dependent. It is the culture that results from this control that is much more insidious. Uh, Alexis de Tocqueville, who was a, uh, a famous political philosopher who wrote much about democracy, uh, he and later uh, John Stuart Mill pointed out this notion of the tyranny of the majority, the fact that sometimes tyranny can result just from peer pressure from the majority of people around you. And on the moon or Mars, when you're living in a lethal environment, most people will be terrified that the authorities could kill them if one rogue individual starts causing trouble. So there will be a great deal of peer pressure for individuals to conform, to come into line and not cause trouble. And this will cause a culture of extraordinary conformity in these environments where it's difficult uh, to dissent. And this tyranny of the majority, I, I predict, will be one major problem of living in space. The other problem is that in these environments, people are inherently restricted. And this is again where our good old friend coronavirus comes in. All of us are experiencing restrictions at the moment, being told to stay in our houses, uh, not move out anywhere, not being able to travel to other countries. And I think at the moment we don't particularly regard this as tyranny. We're all happy to, to engage in this because uh, coronavirus is potentially lethal and we all see ourselves as mobilized against a common foe. And certainly in the extraterrestrial environment, the lethal external conditions like the coronavirus will be regarded as a common foe and everyone will be willing and happy to align and behave themselves in order to, um, to push back against a potentially lethal environment. But if this carries on for years and years, then you can understand it leads to a repressive regime. Imagine if this pandemic, we were to be told that in fact, we now know the pandemic is going to carry on for 50 years and lockdowns and, um, uh, and regulations to prevent travel to other countries are now going to be implemented for 50 years. How would you feel about that? So you can see that once a lethal condition um, like the coronavirus, but in the extraterrestrial case, the environment itself becomes perpetual, then you have the conditions for tyranny and an extreme erosion of individual liberty. Added onto this culture, this, this lethal outside environment, is the fact that freedom of movement will be severely restricted. You can't just walk out and walk out of your house and get away from people on the moon or Mars if you're getting fed up with them. You have to put on a spacesuit. And those restrictions of movement are equivalent to some of the worst restrictions of movement that are imposed in totalitarian regimes or in cities and towns in our current pandemic. And again, if you imagine these things perpetuated over decades and uh, indefinitely, you can see how it would lead to a, a culture of tyranny. So does that mean that space is going to be full of tyrannical dictatorial regimes, people being controlled by authorities that control their oxygen? Uh, not necessarily. Certainly these things have been um, have been uh, favoured tropes in science fiction films. You may have watched Total Recall. Uh, there is an example of um, a community of people whose oxygen was being controlled by a corporation. Um, and Heinlein, a, a well-known science fiction writer, wrote a wonderful novel called The Moon is a Harsh Mistress, which is about a, uh, a group of people on the moon who try to gain independence from um, the tyrannical oversight of the Earth. So science fiction writers have already explored 
the notion of tyranny. And we know that this is a real problem. Uh, my own interest is more of a, an academic interest in the sense that we are interested in bringing scientists and political philosophers together to think about these questions. Can it be overcome? Are we uh, relegated to a future of tyrannies in space, which of course would be very bad, not just for the people living in space, but also for the Earth. We don't want to live on an Earth where we're looking up into the night sky out of the gravity well, thinking that out there in space are a vast number of dictatorships and tyrannies looking down on our planet. The spread of tyranny through the solar system uh, would not be a good outcome for our civilization, either beyond the Earth or on the Earth. I think there are ways to overcome it. One of my favorite uh, ideas is, is a concept that I call freedom engineering, where you could use engineering to introduce freedom into a space settlement. Here's an example. Oxygen. Instead of building one oxygen machine that can be controlled by a central authority, why not build lots of oxygen machines owned by everyone? On the surface of Mars, for example, we could take the carbon dioxide from the atmosphere and you can break it down over a catalyst and make oxygen. And with that technology, every individual on Mars could own their own oxygen producing machine. You could imagine a habitat, for example, with your oxygen producing machine in the wall, sucking in Martian atmosphere, breaking it down and making oxygen that the people in that habitat could breathe. And if every single person on the surface of Mars owned their own oxygen machine, it would be very difficult for the central authorities to control that oxygen because it would be dispersed. If they have access to just one machine, if the oxygen produced in a settlement comes from one machine, it's a lot easier for a tyrannically inclined uh, administration to control that machine and introduce um, a fundamentally dictatorial regime. Here's another example. When you build a settlement on the moon or Mars, you build a certain number of spacesuits that you need to carry out scientific tasks or the maintenance of your habitats, your settlement. Instead, what you might want to do is build many spacesuits, produce a manufacturing line, a mass production of spacesuits that goes far beyond the scientific and engineering requirements and allows people to put on a spacesuit and walk around the surface of the moon however much they want, whenever they want. In other words, the mass production of spacesuits should not be driven by science and engineering, but instead by freedom engineering, the desire to use engineering to maximize the chances of liberty in space. And in this case, spacesuits would simply give people the freedom to be able to walk outside the habitat, to get away from their work colleagues or their family, or whoever it is they want to get away from for a few hours and get their own space. Freedom of movement, in other words. It's not gonna be complete freedom of movement. They're still gonna be in a spacesuit. They're still gonna be in a lethal environment that could kill them. But nevertheless, the opportunity to get away and using engineering to maximize these opportunities is one way to push against uh, tyranny. There are other ways as well that we're all familiar with. Freedom of expression. Uh, in any extraterrestrial settlement, information about oxygen supplies, about the political structures, about the economic structures of the settlement should be freely available. And just as on the earth, a culture of freedom of expression, freedom of discussion, freedom of conscience is one way in which one can expand the conditions for, um, for liberty and particularly the cultural environment for liberty. It's not just about engineering. It's not just about a bill of rights or having political structures that are designed to perpetuate freedom. It's also about a culture of freedom that's embedded in the way in which people behave and the, as I say, the freedom of expression that people are allowed. All of these things can help uh, create freedom. So are we relegated to a future of tyrannies spread throughout space? I think the answer is no, we're not. It's not a foregone conclusion. But I think what we can say is that space is tyranny prone. It is likely to be an environment that will perpetuate and encourage the conditions for the emergence of tyrannical regimes and dictatorially minded people. So just as on the earth, it's no different from the earth, we have to find ways to push back against that. But I would say that in space, it's going to be a harder task. And maybe trying to push back against tyranny in space will reinvigorate the political philosophical discussions about freedom on the earth. Perhaps as we move out into space, we will find a new intellectual space to argue about the conditions for liberty. How much individual liberty should people have? What is the power of the state? Uh, what is the justification for the state? All of these questions have occupied us for centuries, in fact, even millennia. As we go out into space, they will become exciting and reinvigorated questions. 
that will not only fashion the way in which our societies form in space, but may also inform a new and invigorated debate about the conditions for freedom here on the earth. So thank you very much, everyone, for joining me again. Take care of yourselves as usual, and I'll speak to you in future lectures.